old, and we have seen black kids be suspended at alarming rates, more than their peers. We have to go to the school board and tell them that that is over. We need mental health services in school. We need guidance counselors in school. I had someone in guidance tell me that I should just go to community college. I have a master's degree now. We need to go and we need to hire guidance counselors that are going to help for our kids. Now that's just school board. Let's move to city council. That's one level of government. Let's move on to city council because they need to be held accountable as well. When we talk about Black, Matter, Black Lives Matter, we're talking about the police department. Right now in Long Beach, they're searching for a police commissioner. Right now, they're searching for a police commissioner. We have to tell the city council that we will only support them and we will only support a police commissioner that is dedicated to what everyone is here marching about today. If you care about Black Lives Matter, you ought to care about affordable housing. If we cannot live here, if we cannot afford to live here, how can a black life matter? Tell me that. We need to hire black people full time in the city. Right now, the only time you see black people working are on behind trucks. They have part-time jobs. They have low-wage jobs. When I was director of community development for the city, I was the only black person in a managerial position. I was the only person in senior staff meetings, right. and that's not all right. So we ought to tell city council members, when it's time to hire, hire black, hire local. Let's do that. Let's do that. We also need to create black landmarks. There's only one black landmark in this entire city, and that's the MLK Center. What are we telling our kids? as they go by streets named after white presidents who owned slaves. What are we telling our kids? We need to rename Riverside Boulevard, MLK Boulevard, and that's just a goddamn start. We need black landmarks. At the county level, next level of government, and we have county officials here, I saw Denise Ford, we have a county executive, the county controller lives right here, I used to work for him, and they ought to have an, a black agenda an anti-racist agenda, and that starts with black-owned businesses. The county budget is $3.1 billion. $3.1 billion. And right now, county contracts, the procurement of our government, those, those $3.1 billion, they don't build black businesses. So all of us today, our, our, our next step ought to be to speak to these county officials and say we want that $3.1 billion to invest in black communities, to invest in black businesses. Otherwise, we'll vote you out. We will vote you out. Same thing as far as hiring black employees at the county level. Same thing. We need to hire there as well. And we need to reform the police department at the, uh, at the county level as well. Now the last thing that I'll touch upon is the state level, and I'm so thankful for the senator in your words. And I'm thankful that you said that in Albany there's gonna be action, because we will watch. We need to repeal 50A. For those that don't know, 50A is the law that makes sure that, that, makes sure that police uh, uh, disciplinary records are held secret. Right now, we, don't, you know, we have tons of police officers throughout the state that we cannot see their, their disciplinary records. That's not right, we have to repeal that. But it's more than that. We need to return, if you're an elected official, you need to, to return all money that you got from a police union contract. If you took money from police unions, if they are influencing your politics, you cannot legislate for us without their influence. Give the money back. Or invest that money in the community. Give that money they give to you, give it to a local nonprofit. Give it back. Give it back. We also need funding, as he said. We need funding from the state level to fund these initiatives at the local level. We can't do anything without money, and we need the state to step up to make sure that the local level has the money to make these reforms. We also need to legalize marijuana, and we need, we need to legalize marijuana, and we need to expunge the records of people who were convicted previously. We need that gone. We need that going. And in addition, when we legalize marijuana, we, make, we need to make sure black people have the ability to take advantage of the economics that come with it. So, 
You know, this is a bit uncomfortable for me because I'm usually behind the scenes, but I have something to say. You know, I hope everyone has gotten the petition that we have. If you turn on your airdrop, we'll make sure you get it. If you follow me on any of my social media, it's all over. You know, we're making sure that we're putting together this agenda. You know, black folks in this community, and I've met with them on the side of government, they've been saying the same thing time and time again. They want affordable housing. They want jobs and opportunity for their kids. We're not asking for a handout, we're asking for equality. We're asking for equity. It's not rocket science. It really isn't, and it's about time. So, we have to make sure that, obviously today we're here for George Floyd, we're here for Black Lives Matter, but each and every one of you have the ability to hold all these local electeds accountable. I'll make sure you have the information, the questions to ask, guarantee I'll make sure everyone who wants that has it, go to my social media pages, it is there. But it does not stop, you know, when one black person gets shot. It stops when your neighbor, you know, we're segregated here, that's where I grew up, we're segregated there, as long as that is happening, as long as locally, we have racism, and as long as we have school board officials, city council officials, the county government, state legislators that are not forcing anti-racist policies, we won't go forward. Um, thank you so much for hearing me.